Live from the Export Beer Garden Studios and brought to you by Export Ultra, the beer for here. This is the Agenda Podcast for Friday the 3rd of May. The Agenda Podcast, the home of sporting nonsense and claptrap. Brought to you by Export Ultra. Well, welcome in, Lane, to Dog Piss Fridays. Uh, in our office, it is customary for people to bring their dogs in, or they're allowed to bring their dogs in on a Friday if they'd like to. Not a fan. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, sometimes it can fizz you up if you're maybe a little bit dusty on a Friday and you see a weird dog. You're like, oh, this is great. I remember one day I was so hungover and I saw a dog walk into the office. I was like, this is incredible. Went to pat the thing. I was like, g'day, mate. And it whipped its head around. It was like a bulldog looking thing. Just as I put my hand out, I put my thumb so far into its eye that I just about threw up. I was like, there was, oh my God. there was the Alsatian, the racist Alsatian as well that you had issues with. There is a racist Alsatian in our office. That's not we what, can't say German Shepherd. That's, that's not what that's prompted. <laughs> I don't know where the shepherd was from, all right? I'm not going to make those allegations. All I know is an Alsatian, and for whatever reason, whenever I walked past, it would growl or bark. It didn't bark at anyone else. No one else. And it's quite a big office that we work in. We, and, um, yeah, like I said, I'm not a fan of the dog. dog. I mean, pe- yeah. people go, well, you bring your kids in. Not every fucking Friday. Yeah. And I don't let them shit on the carpet either. That's also if my kids shit on the carpet, Yeah. my kid's not coming back. No. But, but the other thing is, you, you, that's because you don't want to leave three kids locked inside your house unaccompanied yeah. for a whole working day. You happily do that with your dog. Oh, 100%. And that's the difference, I think. But today, uh, someone brought their dog in, and it pissed right next to my, my desk this morning. And it was pungent. This piss was like... Cat piss. S- oh, mate. No, it was like, yeah, it was honestly like syrup. This thing, <laughs> obviously not getting enough water into its diet. Uh, it was, it was thick. It was smelly. Can you? Yeah. Well, once this podcast is over, can you find out who owns that dog? Because yeah. I'm pretty sure they sit pretty near us. I know who owns it. Yeah. Go over, casually, unzip your pants. Yeah. And urinate all over. I'm presuming it's a her. It's, no, it's a, it's a he. Is yeah. it? Yeah. Piss all over his desk, all through his keyboard, <laughs> while he's working. I've... And then he'll go, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "Nothing, mate. Just." Don't worry about it. Uh, um, I'll come and clean it up. Sorry, I'll clean I'll come, it up. I'll clean it up in a bit. Yeah. But just if you could deal with it just for now. I'm, I've just got a meeting. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but I'll be back to clean it up. The only, the only, I have enjoyed seeing a dog piss in an office a couple of times. One time was, uh, someone brought this awful dog into the office and a, and a girl, it was in the middle of winter, she just bought this new jacket and it was underneath her desk. Was that shit dog? It was shit dog, yeah. It was the dog that we referred to around the office as shit dog. It was, it was the shittest shit, dog. It was a shit dog. It was a shit dog. And anyway, it came in and pissed all over her jacket <laughs> and then walked out. Oh, poor, poor girl. Um, and obviously working in radio, there's a lot of dogs that will like piss in the corner of a studio. Uh, to his eternal credit, Colin uh, Heath's dog, I don't think he's ever pissed in the office. He, he, he has. He's pissed in the flavor studio. <laughs> Again, racist. Racist dog. Uh <laughs> no, I was working in I had my first office job when I first moved to Auckland. It was this big polished concrete floors and giant glass like meeting rooms, and they had a massive meeting like clients over from Australia, blah 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 blah. And someone had brought their dog in. There was only one door in and out of this meeting. The meeting had just finished. The dog pissed this massive puddle on the concrete floor that stretched about. Honestly, this thing was about almost two meters square by the time it all just <laughs> flattened oh. out. Um, and it was right in the doorway because it was waiting for its owner who was in the meeting. And so now all of a sudden you've got 12 of these big wigs whose GDP would eclipse most small African countries in this room and they can't get out because there's piss all over the door. And they're like, <laughs> how do we, oh God. And they were like, can you clean it up? I was like, just jump, just jump, get a run up. So old woman in heels. Oh, but I, I had a couple of mooses with big clients in London. We had Coca-Cola coming in. It was a big pitch for Coca-Cola for their events company. Mm. And I wasn't involved in the pitch. I wasn't trusted. Um, but yeah. I'd recently bought a remote control helicopter. Remember when they were, they were the big thing, the little ones? Yeah. They were yeah. like little mosquito ones. Or, you know, the you fly them inside, yeah. Yeah, you fly them inside. But every now and then, like, you'd be on the remote, and the remote wife, like, the, the link would go, <laughs> and it would just do its own thing. <laughs> so I was flying around the office, and then it took a beeline to the glass wall of the um, <laughs> conference room, and then it just hit the glass and went tick, 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 up and down the glass. <laughs> and I'm like frantically trying to shut it off. And I never forget, it's Harvey Goldsmith was the, he goes, opens the door and just goes, 
what the fuck is going on out here? And I'm like, I'm trying to stop that because I'm trying to stop the helicopter. And he goes, what the fuck are you doing flying a helicopter? <laughs> and then the next day, everyone else bought these uh, Bluetooth uh like surface to air missiles that you could control, like <laughs> and so, so I'd fly it up. <laughs> and, and, and everyone, <laughs> everyone had Nerf bullets in their uh, like uh, surface to air missiles, and it was flying the helicopter. It was like <laughs> going up, and he walked in again and goes, "I fucking give up with you guys." He's like fucking stormed into his office, slammed the door. Uh, what did uh, you say his name was? Harvey Goldsmith. Is he from the ASB ads back in the day? He was he Goldstein. No, he he organised Band Aid. Oh really? Yeah, he was a fuck. He was a legend. He was. He smoked durries inside. Didn't care about them. No smoking uh, laws. Proper madman shit. Yeah, proper madman. He yeah. He was. You can see him on stage during Band Aid. Even I think was that um, the movie that came out. He's on stage in the yeah. middle there. He put all that together. All oh, right. Yeah, yeah. And then what did he do? Go out and dance on stage. Did he sing? No, he came out and they thanked him and he just like he's like a bald little Jewish guy. All oh, right. Yeah, yeah. But he's got a mouth like a sewer. Yeah. <laughs> And this was in front of the client. What the fuck is... We didn't win the client, by the way. Coke, yeah. Coke didn't take the deal. <laughs> it was quite an expensive wee helicopter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> big deal. Uh, all right, Sky, uh, Sky Super Rugby is on this weekend. It's a big weekend of Super Rugby, actually. We've got two commentaries, I believe, across yeah, the weekend. Yep, we got Hurricanes, Retards, uh, Friday night, and then the uh, Chiefs Mana versus the Weakness on yeah. Saturday. We're going to get into the odds in the ACC sports book, which will be on this feed, so keep an eye out for that later on today if you want any uh, tips on that one. But to be honest, I can only see this round going chalk. Hurricanes to beat the Retars. Uh, yep. Blues to beat the Rebels. Yep. Moana Pacifica, technically a home game for them. This is They're playing in Tonga, and um, you know a lot of Tongan players of Tongan descent in their team. A lot of them haven't been to Tonga before. So this is not really a massive home game for them. Although, they have had like a week in there, you know, assimilating. There'll be a bit of feeling around this one for them. Yeah, I think in, in terms of, yeah, in terms of getting up for a game, I yeah. don't think there's one that they're not, this is one that they're going to get up for. But yeah. the Highlanders, I don't mind them at two bucks, but we'll talk about that probably yeah. a bit later on. 210, but yeah, th so they're the outsiders there, the, the Highlanders, and they haven't had a great season, I think, by their own admission. And also, I don't think you can discount the temperature swing in going from the middle of the, D the Dunedin of uh, the Edinburgh of the South yeah. to Nukualofa. You know, like that's going to be a pretty tough swing. I think that a lot of teams struggle with that in Fiji. Yeah. Um, so I think that maybe the Highlanders could struggle. You pair that into um, Moana Pacifica getting up for this game. But it's always been a bizarre sort of, well, not bizarre, but like a tough team concept to me where you've got a, a melting pot of different nations playing together, but then in a different nation that none of them represent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it is a bit weird. Yeah, it's always seemed, I don't want to say a box tick, but it's always seemed like a box tick to me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I think uh, it's just it's just been hard for people to latch onto and be like, oh yeah, I get it, yeah. I'm on board with this. And I think you see that with the uh, teams. This is also the fourth ground that they've played at this year. Do you think? Thinking about that, do you think the Moana Pacifica is, you know, only got a certain life cycle before you have, like, we've got the Fijian Drua. Yeah. Do we have a Tongan and a Samoan team? Once, I think so. Once the development of this team goes forward and people can see there's a, a kind of pathway, yeah. do you think that splits out into two? Yeah, I think it actually just becomes a Samoan team because right. Tonga probably doesn't have the population for it. Yeah. Um, whereas Samoa's probably big enough. I don't know, maybe you. Maybe down the track you bring in a Tongan Eagles team, but I'd, I don't know. I, I, I think that – because the other thing is, and we haven't really tapped into it yet, but it's a great holiday destination to go and watch your Super Rugby team yeah. play over in Samoa. Yeah. Go and play over in – like they're having some dengue fever issues over in Samoa at the moment. Yeah. By, by the time they get the team there, that'll all be sorted, I'm sure. Um, but I think because the Crusaders for the longest time have been sponsored by Fiji Airways because it's a rite of passage as a Cantabrian to fuck off to Fiji for a week in the middle of winter. So it's, you know, it's always been a, like, I don't understand why the packages aren't a bigger thing. Like, come watch the Crusaders. Well, yeah. Super Round should be there. Super Round should, should be in Fiji. 100%. In Denaro. Oh, my God. Like, just flatten half the golf course in Denaro. Put, yeah. put a rugby ground in there. Fill up the resorts. We commentate from the, what's it called? The Hard Rock Cafe there? Yeah. In Denaro? Yeah, we can get on the Buller Bus. We get on the Buller Bus? Oh, I'm all in. <laughs> I'm all in. We're going to move that.
Never mind Queenstown. Yeah. Let's, let's get, get to Fiji. Yeah. And then eventually to Apia, you know, because I think these, these destination places are going to be are going to be the go. Yeah. Um, anyway, I, it's going to be interesting to see how that one plays out between Moana and the Highlanders. Chiefs v Force, that's going to be a uh, an absolute rollicking. Um, yep. Hope so. Because <laughs> I, I think so. they, they struggled. I remember last year, I think they might have almost tripped up against the Force. Uh, it was when Richard was, Kahui was playing... Well, oh course, yes, yeah. I yeah. think they were a bit starstruck by his good looks. Yeah, and they almost slipped up. The mana, yeah. yeah. Well, a lot of them would have looked up to him. Yeah, you know, um, back in the day. So, uh, yeah, makes you shocked he's not playing this year. I just sort of thought he would always play. Yeah, he's just eternally young and good looking yeah. and yeah. Richard Kahui. But anyway, that's how she lines up this week. And again, commentaries tonight of the Hurricanes versus the Retards, and then tomorrow the Chiefs be the Force. Uh, and news, big news for kind of uh, parents out there. Yes. Club rugby starts tomorrow, oh, this weekend, it? so the punishment begins. Uh, I've got three kids playing rugby. I've got a of them playing tackle, one's playing ripper. Uh, the punishment begins not only early morning starts on Saturday, but WhatsApp groups. Mm, right. Now, I may, I'm talking to parents here, but I'm sure it translates over to general WhatsApp groups. Yeah. But every team has a WhatsApp group now. Great. And there's just some some basic rules and etiquette around WhatsApp that people don't know, yep. and it's starting to piss me off. <laughs> what and, are they? Can I guess one of them? Okay, yeah. Uh, so this is an administrative WhatsApp group. You guys are trying to coordinate on admin. It's basically... It's not an opportunity to get your jokes off. Is that one of the things No, that's being, it's not actually. Yeah. I, I, I'm surprised. Because that pisses me off. No, it's not jokes. It's just idle chit-chat. It fucks me off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because and, we're trying to find dates, numbers, yeah, times. correct. And you're in here with your bullshit. Now I've got to scroll six pages yeah. back. Here's rule number one, okay, for WhatsApp groups. No one cares what you have to say. Yeah. No one gives a fuck, okay? This group is to, here to tell the manager and the, the coach how to communicate to parents and caregivers or whatever. Don't ask about what the contingency plan is if it rains at four days out, okay? No one cares. It's not, that's what it's for, okay? Meanwhile, 28 people have been notified. None of them care, okay? Mm. None of them care. Rule number two, no one wants an answer, okay? No one wants an answer. Just chuck a thumbs up, okay? Yeah. We've changed practice to 4.30 today. If you want it, just a thumbs up, maybe even like a smile emoji, heart emoji, I don't give a fuck, okay? Mm. I don't want an answer. I don't want practices at four. See you there. Great. Awesome. Johnny will be there. Oh, I can't make it. Uh, Stevie's got guitar. Don't give a fuck if Stevie's got guitar, okay? Meanwhile, 28 people get notified. No one cares. And by the way, every single time that someone answers that, 28 Correct. people are getting notified. Rule number three. If a player is unavailable, okay, if little Johnny is injured, DM the coach, okay? Yeah. DM the coach. I don't give a fuck that he's got dengue fever or he's lost his leg or he's lost an eye, okay? I don't, I don't care. Uh, anything about that because what happens then a cascade of like sympathy and empathy pile on happens because oh, they go okay. they go oh yeah Manaya he got his leg amputated and then someone goes oh my god I hope he's okay uh thoughts and prayers whatever and then other people see that and go well fuck if I don't show empathy I'm gonna look like a dick so the empathy pile on comes on mm. it comes thick and fast meanwhile 28 people on the feed don't give a shit and also then you've got to try and find what the answer to the original question was. Yeah. And you've got to scroll back through three pages of, oh, yeah. I hope he's okay. Yeah, I know. And this bleeds into rule number four, and that is post-match. If you want to thank the coach or the manager for their time and effort to put in, say it to his face or her face, okay? After the game, say, hey, thanks, Manaya. Um, appreciate what you do. Don't jump on the fucking thread and go, hey, Manaya, appreciate your time. Because then again... Yeah. Everyone feels like they have to say thanks, otherwise they look like the asshole. Yeah. 28 people comment. Meanwhile, most of the group get notified who don't give a fuck. Yeah. So that's my four golden rules. Yeah. And the fifth one is just start a community page where people can't answer back. Because yeah. WhatsApp has a function yeah. now. So this is more directed at the coach and managers. There's a community function now where you can start a community and you can nominate who can post in that community and people cannot respond except for emojis. Uh, yes, but we they, used this in Paris. Oh, my God, it was a godsend. Yeah. So we had everyone in Paris, 24 people in Paris. It was like, we're meeting in the lobby at 9. If you're not there, we'll see you at 6 for dinner. Yeah. Boom, send it out. You got a few emojis. And if people had a real issue, 
They've they'd, got your number, so they can DM you. Yeah, or they'll find you at yeah. breakfast and be like, hey, what if this happened, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and be like, oh, no, we're just leaving it. Whatever, man. But we don't have to have 10 negotiations in the in the group chat. Correct. And so that would solve all of those rule problems. Yeah. <laughs> so I've gone through the four rules. What would solve it all? Yeah. Start a community page. Yeah. And then we don't have to do it. But that, yeah, that's my rant over. Winter sport, it's a nightmare. I have got three basketball groups, two netball groups, three rugby groups. Ugh. Uh, I've got a, a like committee group. It's driving me crazy. Yeah. It's driving me crazy. And the, But the thing is, we got through sports without those things. I know. For so long. And it was just like, look, here's what time the game's on. You find out at practice. The game's on Saturday. Be in the parking lot at nine. And that's it. And, and, the, and during winter. Yeah. And also, what if it rains? So it's winter. You play in the rain. Yeah. No, and, rugby does not get cancelled. No. Nah. Unless you're knee deep in water. No. Nah. Put a jacket on. Totally. That's part of going to a rugby game. Oh. Braving it. No, he's got a family uh, function this week. I don't care. Don't care. Don't care. He's either there or he's not. Nah, you know. I don't care. I don't want. I don't know the excuse. I don't want the excuse. I yeah. don't care about it. it. It basically makes me hate you more that you yeah. give an excuse. Yes. Yeah. So As I if, just don't turn up, and then they'll say, "Where's Manai?" He goes, "They can't play this week." Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. I don't need to know about it. I don't need the backstory. Why was it guitar or was you know? It's like I don't give a <laughs> shit. <laughs> shit. He's got AIDS. Oh, cool. <laughs> he got it off his cat. Um, anyway, okay. Yeah, that's pure. All right, so I feel better now. Let's uh, take yeah. a quick breather and then we'll come back and talk a bit more sport. The Warriors are playing the Newcastle Knights Sunday, 4 p.m. over there in Newcastle. Di and Chris will be calling this one. This is um, probably last week was the one where we were really hoping the Warriors were sort of skidding a little bit, fishtailing yeah. down the road, and we were hoping that last week they'd just straighten out. They didn't quite, didn't quite get there, despite... The result, I actually really enjoyed watching and calling the game. Uh, I thought it was quite tight. The only problem is the Titans are the worst team in the comp. Um, so a tight game against the worst teams kind of shit. If that was against the Panthers, that would have been game of the year. Um, but Banana skin? This one? Yeah. I don't know if you can call it a banana skin when we're on a three-game losing streak is the only problem. You know, like we are heavy favourites. And this, we beat them. we've beaten them already once this year. And, sin- and the only person that looked like firing a shot against us then was Kalen Ponga. And he's out now. He's um, broken his foot. So, well, technically it's a Liz Frank injury. But anyway, he won't be playing. So, yeah. but that's what everyone said about the Newcastle Knights last week. And they won. All of a sudden, they've found a little bit of, I wonder if it was one of those things where they depended a bit too much on their superstar. And now that he's out, they're all having to sort of pick it up a little bit. Yeah, I'm nervous. Yeah. I'm a little bit nervous about Sunday. Especially they're playing away. They're at, they're at home at McDonald's. Stadium, whatever it is. Which is a good stadium. Yeah. They went on a nine-game winning streak last year. Yeah. That place was rocking. Yeah, that's that's my concern. Right up until we knocked them out of the playoffs. Oh, that was so good. <laughs> Sucked down there. Um, uh, so there'll be a bit of feeling in it. Yeah. I mean, uh, those home fans, they'll be smarting from what we did to them last year. So, yeah, I'm, I, yeah I don't know. They'll remember them. Oh, I think it's going to be tough. A um, few bits of positivity for the Warriors. Kurt Capewell had been ruled out indefinitely with a throat injury. Um which I suspect is a rite of passage for any rugby league player. That's why they end up all talking like Darren Lockyer, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Kim Proctor, Steve Bryson, all that. Um, it's generally some sort of collapsed larynx. <laughs> and then, uh, But yeah, so he was listed as out indefinitely, which people always take to mean, oh, he's going to be out for a very long time. But more often than not, I think it just means they don't know. They're like, right. oh, I don't fucking know. Yeah. And he's back this week. Oh, so, <laughs> uh, and Bunty R4 returns from a Excellent. hamstring injury, which is good as well. Um, which moves Zion Mo'u, who was the debutante last week that we told you to watch out for, moves him back to the bench. Um, and while he was exciting, I said on the Mad Monday podcast yesterday, he was just doing a Bunty impression. And it, yeah. and it was great. Until he got steamrolled. Yeah. But also, it's great. But when you've actually got, like, why have the tribute band? when you've got the, the actual band there. Yeah. So Bundy's back in as well. I think we're going to win this one, but, um, yeah, like you said, uh, nothing's a sure mm. thing with the Warriors this year. Um, Ryan Fox, just quickly on the PGA Tour, the CJ Cup at Byron Nelson uh, has been threatened by thunderstorms. So he's having to prep for, like, a short turnaround from being told, yep, go, we're, we're playing, then he has to walk out on the course. Surely you just call it off. If there's severe thunderstorms, you've got a field of 100 dudes walking around with bags full of lightning rods. And they're hold- and, and at the top of the swing, you're holding your lightning rod yeah. to the sky. And if you're not playing, then your caddy's holding a lightning rod over your head and an <laughs> umbrella. I don't think that there's anything more dangerous for a golf tournament than that. I think I've, 
I have a vague memory of a golfer being a professional golfer. I want to say, oh, someone will know the answer to this one. I'll be screaming at their phone. Uh, Ratif Hussain or one of those guys, some South African bloke, got struck by a lightning. They said it completely changed him. Um, surely after that, you just stop. Didn't a football player get struck by lightning last year? I remember us talking uh, about it on this podcast. Yeah, there's all sorts of footage on YouTube of people getting smacked by lightning. Yeah, so not, sh- not fun. No. I wouldn't recommend it. Surely you've been there uh, if there's lightning going on. But I don't know. It'd be interesting to see how that one plays. I really hope no one gets lit up by, um, by the God of Thunder this weekend after we've just taken the piss out of it. So GP as well, quickly, Lane, the Black Foils have a nine-point lead after winning three of the last four events, one of those we were at. Yep. Um, and at that one in Christchurch, Australia were penalised eight points for hitting the marker, um, which means I think they were up there with us at the top of the table. Yeah. They're now so far behind because of that, because not only did they hit the marker on the first race, I think it was actually the first marker. It was. And they got pushed into it more or less by us. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, it was, it was uh, so Phil Robinson. Not- Oh right, yeah, yeah. it was Phil Robinson, the Canadian yes. team. That and that's that famous line when he smashed them into the um into the market into the market, and then he took over the wheel and he got heard on the mic saying, "I think I'm probably the most uh, oh, I'm, most I'm, hated Kiwi. No, no, yeah, I'm the most loved Kiwi oh, on yeah. the course right now because yeah. he just ran the Australians into the market. <laughs> and then the long and short of that was they weren't allowed to compete for the rest of the weekend as well. Oh, so their boat was their boat was totally, fucked. Yeah, so and so was the marker. How cool are the markers as well? Because when we were there, yeah. They're, they're all uh, GPS robots. marked, and they've got robots and little um, thrusters on them. So there's no anchor. It's not no. old school where you just biff a bit of concrete to the bottom of the ocean. They're all motorized and yeah. moving the whole time. So they've got, it's a guy sitting on a computer who just changes the course live. And when, at, they're, when they're finished, they all form an orderly queue yes. and, and sail back in. Like a bunch of ducks. Yeah. It's, it, we were like, what's going on here? And they said, oh, they're all just robotic. And they all just park up. Yeah. And they all come in like on a line. I was like, who's towing those? They're like, no, 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 they're on their own. It was like Toy Story when they were all underneath the road cones, yeah. hopping down the road. <laughs> That's what it looked like. Um, but anyway, so the Black Foils have got a nine-point lead after that, and the Aussies are having a bit of a whine, saying, oh, it's only because they're eight um, points, which is way too harsh a penalty. And Burling said, I've always said that the collision penalty points are ridiculously harsh in sale GP, but they're built that way because it's obviously challenging for the league to keep the boats you know, on the, on yeah. the course. But it is a very clear policy, just a very harsh policy. That was basically like po- political speak for bummer. Sucked <laughs> yeah. uh, it's true, though. I mean, the league can't have boats smacking into each other. Nah. Because the, the unique thing with GP, as we talked about when we went down there with them, is they've only got one technical support team that looks after all the boats. Mm. So if you have a technical problem, one team look after all of them. So if you trash your boat, if two, two boats get trashed, mm. that team has to fix both of them. It's, and it's expensive and it's time consuming and they, they must be like, just don't fucking crash the boats. Yeah, because the other thing is they have to pack the whole shit up into a shipping container and move it yeah. you know, away to the next place. So they don't have long to fix these boats. Yeah. So they have to have a massive deterrent and eight points it is. And look, if that means we win, then yeah, so be yeah, it. Bermuda, here we come. So be it. All right, let's take one more quick break and then we'll come back with yours, please. Yours, please. Brought to you by Leader, home of the lasagna topper. Just a couple to get through today ahead of the weekend, but I thought it was important that we get to them. Uh, so caller number one, yours, please. G'day, fellas. A little bit late on this one. Do you reckon there's merit to the theory that uh, for signing Fisher-Harris, we had to take um, the younger Cleary as a bit of a favour to say, uh, train him up for a couple of years and then and send him back and we'll let you have uh, Fisher Harris a year early. Let me know. Not a bad. Not, I, not, I, didn't even, I didn't even think about that. I didn't think of that either. I, I, think, there, I think there is something to it. There's a bit of horse trading going on. I reckon there could be a little bit of horse trading. I think that maybe because it was announced about a week after the James Fisher Harris signing, and I do wonder if maybe there was some sort of negotiation where the Warriors go to Panthers and say, look, we want James Fisher-Harris. He wants to come here. Yeah. Um, but we'd like to have him a little earlier because he's still got, a, I think he had like three years left on his contract or something. And then Ivan Cleary goes, oh. I want to see my son on an OE. Yeah, you could probably have him. What do I get? Well, like, what do you want? And he goes, Sign my son to a first grade deal, <laughs> <laughs> and you can have him. I I don't know. I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't be shocked either. I didn't never thought about it. Neither. I never put the two together. So. I think that's that is a great yours, please. Yeah, 
You've seen through the Matrix there. Yeah. Um, and also a couple of points on the uh, performance of the yours, please. That was a lights on yours, please. You can yep. tell. But potentially at night. <laughs> bit of wind. <laughs> bit of wind. But also I could hear crickets in the background. Do you think he was outside? Maybe he, he was definitely outside. He, so he didn't want the missus to hear. He was going for a walk. I think mm. we were accompanying him on that walk. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. And that's where you do your clearest thinking is on a walk. Or, and, or doing a poo. Or doing a poo. Um, and I think that he has just really connected the dots there. Is there some? Do we have anything that another club might want that we could negotiate? Mm. Some sort of like, oh, we've got your brother hostage, and if yeah. you want him released, <laughs> we'll take your best player. I don't know. We'll give we'll give you the Mount Smart Joker. Yeah, I think I think he's bang on there. I, I think that's exactly what's going on. Um, one more, and this is off the back of something that happened yesterday. Uh, so another caller here, yours please. Kia ora, everyone. Um, I'm looking for love here today. My name is Blake Dawson. I'm uh, well. I'm 25. I'm a about 80 kilos if I haven't had a shit in the morning. <laughs> and uh, on Tinder, I'm 6'1", and in real life, I'm about 5'7 and a half. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I used to be uh, the fourth fastest cross-country runner in the country uh, when I was 13 years old, and I'll hang my hat on that for the rest of my life. If you're interested, uh, you know where to find me. So, yeah, Blake Dawson. Yep. Uh, any, uh, sounds like a bit of a short king. He's 5'7". It's not very big. 6'1 well, on Tinder. You yeah, know. that's so. true. But obviously, fit. Yeah. That one's a bit of cross-country. Well, depending if he's had a shit or not, yeah. That's right. So, um, are you single, 25? He's single and ready to mingle? Yep, this is a new initiative that we've been launching on Yours Please, um, using it to find love. Obviously, yep. Blake's up for grabs. Didn't mention uh, preference or orientation, so no. anyone out there can get also, in touch. Also, he didn't really give a, he said, you know, where to find me. Didn't really give a, a, a handle or anything to DM him. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll take care of that. We're okay. the matchmakers here. So, oh, okay. all, all we need is if someone... if. If someone really liked the cut of his jib, yep. then they can send us in a voicemail and, um, you know, we'll, we'll play Cupid in this one. Okay. I would, my only thing, like, this is great. This is the first time that we've had someone come through looking for love. I probably wouldn't lead with the... Taking a shit the thing? Taking a shit thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'd pro That's probably like a second or third date thing for me. I don't know. Each their own. But maybe you just want to be up front and be like, look, this is who I am. Yeah. Take me or leave me. Yeah. Um, but it is quite harsh just to my ears. Quite confronting. And I'm it? thinking yeah. if I'm... You know, someone out there looking for love. And all, like, I'm out there, I'm, like, wondering what someone's bringing to the sexual marketplace. And if the first line is something, you know, bowel-related, yeah, I'm, I'm probably... Okay, so you're saying yeah. that the 30-second sales pitch from Blake is of 7 out of 10? Better work on? Yeah, I mean, he's obviously, he's very honest, Yeah, I would say. Um, he's been very upfront. He's admitted some of his shortcomings. So I think he's admitted that he's a liar. As well, um, so I like that he bared his soul, but yeah, I think that there's a few we could polish that up. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we edit out the shit part. You're taking a shit. <laughs> no, nah, no edits. We play them as they come. <laughs> um, get in touch with us on the voicemail uh, function on your iHeartRadio app if you want to also look for love. Oh, just before we go as well, we've got the uh, TAB good punt. Oh yes, what are uh, we going for? We are slapping. Well, I think you've chucked this one on. Oh, this, this is, is the Saturday Saturday multi. This is the Saturday four league uh, deck chair. We're going Moana Pacifica. Uh, sorry, Highlanders to beat Moana Pacifica, Crusaders to beat the Reds, Chiefs to beat the Force, and the Brumbies to beat the Drua. So it's all the New Zealand teams on Saturday plus uh, the Brumbies to beat the Indrua. I think the only banana skin is that is that Highlanders game against Moana Pacifica. I think the rest of them are, are pretty. Pretty set. Yes. So yeah. you multi those all up. It's uh, around three dollars fifteen. We put our hundred dollar bonus bet on that. That could return two hundred and fifteen dollars back into the TAB uh, kitty for the ACC. And we paid out sixteen hundred bucks yesterday as well. Yeah, pal. So sixteen lucky people got a hundred bucks cash dropped into their TAB account. Yep. So you can follow along responsibly. Um, we'll post that one up on social media as well, so you can have a look. We'll have game day good punts as well on both the commentaries tonight. Uh, tomorrow night for the Chiefs game and then also on Sunday for the Warriors versus the Newcastle Knights game. Keep an eye out for the ACC Sports Book podcast that'll be out on this feed later on this afternoon. Uh, make sure that you've got your pen ready because Carl Tiley will be tipping out some hot horses. Uh, and other than that, enjoy your weekend watching sport and we will see you on Monday for another episode of the Agenda Podcast. You've been listening to the ACC's Agenda Podcast brought to you by Export Ultra. For more episodes, like and follow on iHeartRadio or wherever you get your podcasts.